This box weighs over 100 pounds, which should give you an idea of the type of e-bike that's in it. Hey everybody, Micah here with ebikeschool.com. Today we are unboxing the Fouquier Libra electric bicycle. Let's hit it. Yeah, this thing is definitely gonna be a beast. Oh man, how am I gonna get this thing out of here? All right, start with the light thing. Ooh, the accessory box isn't even that light. There's like five pounds right there. Try to keep all this foam from blowing away. All right, let's slide this bad boy out. All right, that is a big bike. Whew. Nothing else important left in the box. Okay, let's start exposing this thing. Another one-way ticket to Cable Tie City. Now, if there are any e-bike companies watching this, those few of you that are making the shift towards less foam packaging, I applaud you guys. Anybody else, try and use more cardboard and less foam in your e-bikes. There's enough foam in the world. We don't need 20 pounds of it in all of these boxes. All right, starting to get a look at that yellow paint job. And I thought it was gonna be a bit of a brighter yellow. This is more of like a uh, pea yellow, I guess. All right, let's see if we can get this front wheel on so I can stop holding the bike up. We've got this bolt spreader here, keeping the fork apart so it doesn't get damaged in shipping. Those of you that like to get free hardware with your products, here's a nice chance for a long threaded rod and four nuts. There we go, axle nut covers off. Wind those out and time to add a wheel. Now the trick here is lining up that disc with the disc brake calipers and the axles at the same time. If you were good at claw games as a kid, you'll probably get this. There we go. All right, kickstand down. Now after I get those axle nuts on, I like to go ahead and tighten those right away so you don't accidentally forget that you only put them on finger tight and then go right off after you get the bike together. See if they gave us a 15 millimeter wrench in the accessory box. Nicely labeled. Ooh, and there she is. Nice shiny 15 millimeter wrench. All right, wheel on. Let's police our trash here so that we're not losing any in the wind. Oh, not you, come back. Time for more cable ties. Man, look at these massive cable ties holding the front fork in compression. Watch this, whoa. All right, let's see if we can get the bars on now that we got those exposed. Oh, we're missing our bar clamp. Imagine it's in here somewhere. Reflector, nut covers. Ooh, a lock, some wire covers, handlebar clamp. Nicely wrapped up in some blue plastic. Don't want to scratch that Fucare logo. At this point, I should probably ask if anyone knows why this company is called Fucare. Is it Fucare? Is it F-U-Care? F-U-Care? I don't know if I have to bleep that one. Some of these company names seem to have questionable origins. And now a lot of people ask me, how do you know what angle to set your handlebars? And the answer is kind of wherever is comfortable for you. I generally try to, after I get the bolts here fairly tight, there's still a little play. I generally try to align them so they're mostly in line with the actual steering tube here. But depending on the style of bike, uh, it can kind of change. If you like having your bars a little closer to you, you know, you can tilt them forward back like this. Uh, but I generally try to go almost in line with uh, the steer tube, maybe a little bit biased back like that. Right, switching to ratchet mode. God, I love ratcheting Allen keys. Now we've got those on. Let's do a little more cable tie trimming here. Now we're gonna look at that pretty paint job. Here we have, I assume, the front light. Yeah, there she is. So these, you generally wanna wait to put that on until you've got the fender ready. Let's go with that dingle dangle there. The fender is back here, inexplicably. Which I guess the explanation is that it's least likely to get damaged back here. How do I get it out? Oh, you just pull. Now let's bring this fender around here. Slip that guy right in there. And at the same time, we'll set up our headlight. You can start by getting that finger tight and then you just finish it off with whatever your Allen key of choice is. I'm sure they've got a set in the tool kit, but I generally like to use my own tools when I have them available. And here I usually try to lift the fender up as high as it'll go within its adjustment range. Now the other side. You just wanna make sure nothing's rubbing on the fender, like the sides of the tire on the fender stays, which can often happen. So I'll just take a look here and everything's nice and clear. You can get your fingers through there. Nothing's touching. You can always just do the lift test here. Looks good. More foam to remove. 
It's interesting, the back fender is not on, so we gotta bolt that on. I don't know why they don't bolt that on for you. I guess it's more likely to get damaged in shipping that way if it's already attached. We gotta take the keys out here to be able to remove that last bit of foam under the battery. So let's pull the battery out and get that last little foam piece out. Let's see what kind of battery we got here. 48 volt, 15 amp hour, 720 watt hour. Battery back in. Probably got some pedals to put on here. For the pedals, you'll want your 15 millimeter wrench and they come labeled. So I got my right side here, R. Let's pull that off. These stickers are nice because they show you which way to turn it. Though if you've done this before or you've watched my unboxing videos before, you'll know that I just tell you to turn towards the front of the bike. That way you don't have to remember that the left side is reverse threaded. So the top of the pedal goes towards the front of the bike. And the nice thing about mediocre quality pedals is that the bearings aren't nice enough that you can just spin the whole pedal and it'll tighten itself down. And then you do that last little bit here with a 15 millimeter wrench. All right, same thing on the other side. Pedals are on. Reflectors, I'm just gonna leave off for now. You should really install those reflectors, but I think they don't look great on the bike and I do have lights on there. Though you should really install them just in case your lights aren't working or something. Also, I think they might be required by law. You know what, screw it, I should probably just put them on. Also, this is where those nice axle covers are. Reflector is on and we are nice and legal. All right, let's turn the bike on here. Let's probably turn the battery on first. Okay, now let's turn the bike on and we're firing up. Ooh, pretty color screen. I like that step through too, it makes it easy to mount. All right, so <laughs> remember when I was talking about handlebars, I said I like to tilt them back just a little bit. On this one, that's way too far. So let's tilt those back up a bit. That's the beauty of this type of handlebar mount is that you do get that little bit of adjustment. There we go. Remember when I said that I aim for making a parallel with the steering tube? I should just listen to myself because that's about perfect right there. Try to. Oh yeah, that feels better. All right. Ooh. <laughs> All right, let's do a quick check to make sure everything looks good. Derailer, axle nuts I did, axle nuts back here. Fender is clear, brake check, front, rear, suspension looks good. Does this have lockout? No, it doesn't even have lockout. All right, so kind of a cheaper suspension fork. Pedal's tight, crank is clear, no play in the headset. All right, looks good. Now let's take a look at what we got here. All right, so this is a full suspension fat tire bike. We've got basically urban tires though with enough of this tread here that you could do a little fun sort of like dirt trail not some serious off-roading but you know you can get by on some nature trails we have spoked wheels we have uh, mechanical disc brakes these are not hydraulics but they feel nicely tuned out of the box which is nice of course with mechanicals over time i may have to play with those to keep them nicely tuned we have front and rear lighting oh gotta pull that nice plastic off the rear there now something that's a bit weird about this model is that while they give you this nice padded rear bench, there are no foot pegs. So if I'm sitting back here, where do I put my feet? Like generally you do the chain stay thing here, but that's not great because your shoes can be rubbing up against the chain and you can accidentally get your heel right into the spokes. So it'd be great if they included foot pegs here so that the rear passenger didn't have to wear roller blades or something to ride on the back here. Though it is a nice long bench. I mean, honestly, like, if it's within the weight rating, you could get two people back here. This is a nice bench. Let's see what speed we get out of the box. All right, there's pedal assist level one, 12 miles an hour. Level two gets us up to 16 miles an hour. Level three gets us up to 22 miles an hour. Level four gets us up to 27 and a half miles an hour. And level five, 30 miles an hour. And that's all she wrote. All right, now let's get all my stuff and get out of here so we can go test ride this thing. Let's reuse this massive cable tie here. Oh, it's not long enough. I need one more. There we go. Just so I don't lose this thing on the way home. All right, now I need to get this box out of here. give me somewhere nice to tie on to here, do they? I'll go through these like fake louver things. Now, let's go get rid of this massive box and then we will go on a test ride.
All right, so initial thoughts here. Been riding around in the park here, still on the first uh, charge, so I've gotten down to one bar. So I've gotten, you know, maybe uh, 45 minutes or so of riding. Let's get our initial thoughts on the Fouquier Libra here. So far, I've done a combination of street and sort of off-road riding, mostly just riding through a grassy park here. Uh, beautiful day. This is the type of riding I think most people would do combination of on and off road. It's an awesome Sunday morning here. There's actually a car show in the park, which I wasn't expecting, so I got to ride through there. Quick side note, saw some awesome cars known as Corvairs. This was actually my car I had in high school. It was my first car. Uh, my dad got it. We worked on it when I was a kid, and then it became my car. I had a 65 Corvair Corsa Coupe, not unlike uh, this one here. I'm not sure if that's actually a 65, might be a 66. But these were fun little cars. Nothing in terribly special about them. They were rear engine, air cooled, but kind of fun to see so many of those. Anyways, all right, back to the bike. Enough nostalgia for me. So I would say that for $1,199, you know, $1,200, this is actually quite a good bike. Now, it's not the best suspension. I was able to ride over some pretty rutted out uh, sandy grass here, you know, so uh, it did pretty well for going off-road, especially for a $1,200 full suspension bike, but this isn't going to be high-end suspension. Even so, I mean, there's still a lot of power here. This motor got me up to just over 28 miles per hour. I think the highest I hit was 28.3. And even pedaling at that speed was pretty doable. There's a decently large chain ring up here. So that means when I was doing top speed at 28, I wasn't pedaling like an egg beater or something. You know, it was pretty comfortable. We do have seven speeds here. Nothing fancy about this transmission. It is a lower end Shimano Terni, but it works just fine for, you know, average Joes like us that don't need some amazing bike shop derailleur. Something a bit weird though when you're pedaling, the bike's frame here is quite wide. It's actually, there's like two inches of space between the battery and the frame on each side. I feel like they could have shrunk that down. Basically when I'm pedaling, I can sometimes feel my shoes rubbing on there and there's even a rub mark already. So not sure why the frame is so wide there. Perhaps it had to spread out to make this suspension back here and add in these uh, mounting points for the coilover shocks. But just something sort of odd to note there. I'm glad to see parts like the lights, like the fenders built in. Of course, the dual suspension is nice, even if it's not super high end. I think for most people, Spending more time on the road is sort of where this bike belongs. Yeah, you can do off-road riding like this, and it certainly is fun, but this is very much a moped-style bike. I mean, you've got a seat back here. You're never going to have someone sitting on this thing while you're riding off-road. There is suspension, and, you know, you can feel it moving, but you're not going to carry a passenger like that on this type of terrain. So if they had added foot pegs here, this would have been an awesome moped. I mean, it's still pretty great, but I would have loved to seen foot pegs and hopefully they've got an accessory or, you know, there's enough meat here. You could probably add your own. Even if there's no mounting points, you can just drill through and put some aftermarket uh, foot pegs there to turn this into a two person bike. It's got enough power to do it. The battery is decently large at 720 watt hours. So, you know, all in all, I would say that I'm pretty happy with this bike for the price. Like there's not, much to complain about here. Even things like the color screen, I didn't expect to see that on such a low cost bike. Now these are just my initial thoughts. By the time this video airs, I will have a complete review of this bike on Electrek. So I'll put a link below. You should definitely go check that out if you want my, you know, many weeks in opinion on the Fouquier Libra. But just for now, fresh out of the box on the first charge, I would say definitely, you know, thumbs up for this bike. I'm, I'm super happy with it. Dude, what is that thing? Well, it's just a cooler on wheels. Just a cooler on wheels. It goes by cruising, C-R-U-C. I am cruising cooler. Normally they're around $1,300 new. This is one of the first ones. It wasn't working. I found it in Daytona. I have a couple. Yeah. And I got a buddy who knows how to work on them. So two batteries, oh, wow. the motor, the controller. You can fill this with ice. And then it has a little spigot here to drain the ice out. That's awesome. It folds up, you can put it in your... I mean, I got the Winnebago over here, but uh, in a regular car, it's good. It's, it's a blast. That's too cool. You got one of the coolest things here, man. I know. That's what people say. I appreciate that. Last but not least, before we go, it is time to announce the winner of the giveaway from my last video. And the randomly selected commenter is... D. Herman. 
So congratulations, just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You can choose from DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my latest book, The Electric Bike Manifesto. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment down below. You can say anything you'd like at all, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. For anyone who doesn't want to wait that long to hopefully win a copy of one of my books for free, you can always find them on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. See you here next time.